Hello everyone, Pixie here. Today we're going to be looking at the damp roll for the nano gang that I've been talking about. I like to use the carries uh, for this roll. It's really fast because it's a frigate. I don't like going up to a cruiser because their line time are too slow and they just can't kite as well as other ships. The carries is a fantastic choice. It gets the scram and disrupt the optimal range bonus as well as the sensor damp effectiveness and activation cost. Activation cost is also really useful because it's going to let you kite for a long time. What damps do, the primary use is going to reduce your opponent's lock range. Since a nano gang is going to be fighting at a lock range, because you never want to be within scram range, you don't have to reduce your opponent's lock range too much, oftentimes, to stop them from locking anyone at all. Because, you know, most of your ships are going to be fighting at about 40 kilometers, something like that. So most ships that could shoot back at them are probably cruiser size hulls, so might have a lock range of around 60, 70, something like that. So with the triple damps on there, you're going to be reducing their lock range down quite a lot. Really good targets to hit uh, with the carries is anything that's going to put a needle in the side of your uh, composition. So anything that has lots of webs in range, like a, a Hugen, it's a really good target. Uh, maybe a falcon, something like that. E-war is usually a good thing to go for. Uh, other really good targets are long-range sniping boats, like uh, you know a drake, something like that, because a nano gang doesn't have much EHP, and a drake has a lot of EHP and a lot of range, so it can go toe to toe with you up to 60k's. But if you can dampen out, then it's kind of just out of a fight entirely. There's a small use case I find for the um, other charge, which is the scan resolution script. This is generally if, for instance, you're on one side of a gate and there's a gate camp on your side of a gate and you might be at a ping at, say, you know, 200 k's up, and your friends or friend is on the other side of a gate and they want to come through to you, but there's a fast locking ship that will catch them before they can warp off. You can warp down to that gate at 50k or so, load that scan resolution script, put it on their locker, and then when your friends come through, that uh, inst locking ship or fast locking ship won't be able to tag your friends and catch them, and it will allow them to slip away. could also be useful for uh, making the lock times on battleships super, super long, something like that. So I'll just go through this carries fit here. I've got the enduring micro warp drive. This is uh, for cap. A lot of this fit is revolving around cap. Let's simulate this here. Even if I turn this off, it's not cap stable. 2 minutes 20, it's it's a while, but it's not forever. Uh, you can turn this off to get cap stable if you want. Um, so we've got the enduring here. We're going to have three uh, phased scope sensor damps. The reason you don't go for tech 2 is one, the Kind of really expensive, but the main issue is cap again. Very, very cap intensive. I've got a warp disruptor two here. Um, with my skills, which aren't maxed, I get 30, 38k on here because of a bonus, and you can overheat 46k. You've also got pretty nice scan resolution on the ship, so it's actually a fantastic tackle ship as well. You've got a pretty good speed on here, going at 3k cold, which is quite good. You know, it's not as fast as an interceptor or something, but this ship can definitely double for some pretty good light tackle. This uh, speed is also going to allow you to keep away from anybody that uh, might come and tackle you and you know, manipulate them and warp off pretty easy. The tank, we've just got the damage control too, and the small ancillary armor wrapper here. Cap power relay down here. Some people prefer to use the 200mm plate. I think the cap power relay is a much better option. When I've used the plate, it really affects your agility a lot and stops you from warping away or turning around. And obviously the cap here, power relay is going to help with your capacitor. And we've got two small polycarbon engine housing down here, and that's just for the speed again. You can take two of these if you want to, just a little more expensive. And then I've just thrown in some artillery here. Um, you could change this. I'm not completely set on the artillery. Um, you know, it just allows you to throw a bit of extra TPS onto a target if you want to. Another good option I'd say would be to go for auto cannons because they'll help you uh, take out drones. 
if a pilot puts drones on you and then you damp up that pilot, the drones are going to continue locking you. So the carries can have issues getting rid of drones. So I would definitely consider using some type of anti-drone uh, system in the highs. If you're feeling a bit cheap, or perhaps you don't have the skills, you could always consider bringing along a Mollus instead of a Carries. It's still going to have uh, the three damps here, but you're not going to have any long range point, which is a, uh, kind of a big downside, especially if you don't have many people around. For this one, I do have the plate here. I've got the small armor repper and the damage control. Same thing with the damps. This one's got a quad lift. It's just going to give you a better cap well to begin with and uh, reduce your SIG radius. And this, it's got an eye on a field projector for the better targeting range. And this just helps you uh, get a better optimal range on your damps. So you can hit all the way out to 50 with this. And the ionic field projector is going to increase your targeting range to allow you to uh, turn that on easier. Again, you could probably put some auto cannons or something up here as well, just to frag off some drones. This fit isn't perfect. And obviously, you just want to keep some paste in there for repairing uh, with your repper and repairing your charges. With both of these ships, don't be shy to overheat quite a lot. Um, a lot of people often forget to overheat their E War modules. You can totally do this, especially if you screw up, because you've got an optimal range and then a very, very long fall off. Sometimes you might be burning into a fight, or maybe you get pushed out of the way a little bit and you're going to fall into your uh, fall off range, and that's going to allow your target to get their lock range a little bit further and then start locking people up. If that happens, just overheat a little bit. You want to stay in comms like really well with your teammates to know if the target's locking someone up. So if you hear that your target's yellow boxing somebody, might be a good time to overheat. And you don't need to constantly overheat them either. You can just overheat for one cycle to push their lock range back down and then they can relock again but they have to take all that time growing the lock and then you just overheat one more cycle to push it back down and rinse and repeat that. So you can overheat this quite a lot. Alright. So as usual, I'm going to take you guys into an example of the carries being used in a combat situation. I think the carries is a little bit self-explanatory once you start flying it, so I'm not going to bother with too many clips. This clip here isn't me flying, but I was in this clip. I'm flying a caracal, and this is Defiant Daniel's perspective. He was streaming at the time, and I'll leave a link to his Twitch stream down below. So he's in the carries and we're all uh, fighting some people around a provi and he initially goes on the cyclone because it's the only thing on field and then this myrmidon because he wants to stop it getting drones on us it's not much for him to damp yet but the most important thing look at his position he's far away from the gate here and the rest of us are in relatively close so he's protecting himself by having a lot of range he's got his prop mod off to save cap he doesn't need to have that on because his position is already quite good. So we're just waiting for the rest of their fleet to jump through here. He's only holding two damps on there because we don't need more damps than that right now. So as this caracal comes in, he's going to swap onto that caracal immediately because that's an example of one of those sort of long range platforms that I was talking about earlier with its light missiles. He's going to turn his prop mod on here to begin manipulating his position so he can get uh, the caracal between him and the rest of our fleet. And he can also keep damps on it quite well. He is a bit far away. His damps aren't applying fully because he's out at 80 kilometers. He needs to be in a lot closer. But right now, being safe is the most important thing because we're not in any danger. We have the superior force on field. So after the caracal's gone, we go back on the cyclone. And he's just going to put its damps back on there because we've discovered that it is a heavy missile cyclone. So it would be an example of, you know, another sniping platform with a lot of EHP. This get in jumps through, which is immediately a, a danger to us, especially because it's going to have its mutes. So that's obviously the first target to go on. The heavy missiles of the cyclone aren't too big a deal. Um, unfortunately, he gets forced off here, but that's fine. He damped him for long enough for the rest of us to sort of just peace out and come back. 
but he can immediately just turn around and walk back on field. Sooner frigate, it's no big deal, so it doesn't take very long at all. He's also managing an alt on the bottom left, so uh, some of the things he do does may not be completely perfect. So he gets a nice warp in. Notice how he's completely safe from the enemy fleet again. He's got our members between him and the enemy fleet. He's in a nice spot where he sort of, you know, can dip down onto anything that he wants to to damp anyone off who's posing a threat. No one on the enemy fleet is coming in too close, so there's no one who needs to be damped in particular. Um, he does lock up the Armageddon that just MJD'd real close to us. He's got to go. He does put his damps on that hammerhead. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or if he's just like a total god of his game and knows something about the lock range of hammerheads, but I don't know. But he then swaps his uh, damps back over to that Armageddon, who managed to get in close. So that's going to save our team from getting muted or possibly webbed, I don't know how that Armageddon's fit exactly, but it will uh, free up our frigates to piece out of it, and the Armageddon can't do much again. He's keeping a nice orbit there, uh, staying out of danger for the most part. He does have a Caracal coming in on him, who's applying some rapid light damage, but so he uh, swaps his damps over to him, again because it's a long range DPS platform. And then those damps land and Caracal can't do shit. He does unfortunately burn a bit far away, but it's better to play it safe, especially because nobody else on our team's in particular danger. Again, he's set himself up in a nice safe zone where he can dive down and help anyone he needs to. He sees that Saber is getting quite close to our team, so that could be a good target to try and damp, uh, stop him. You know, it is a short range uh, guy, so damps might not be the most effective, but if you can get in close, you can still get a nice point on him or something like that. So, yeah, so overheating his micro warp drive to try and get down there as fast as he can. Uh, the Saber gets killed off anyway, but at least this allows him to reconvene with the rest of our team. A nice position here because he was getting uh, rather separated. The Caracal's getting isolated again, is it better to start applying DPS? So again, damp some of the Caracal to stop those rapid lights coming in and hitting some of our smaller frigate targets. There's another MJD from an Armageddon down to, uh, near our Stratios friend. So that's a risk there as well. But we managed to get out uh, without the helps of the damps. The Armageddon was so close that the damps probably didn't matter anyway. It's better for him just to kite this Caracal and damp the crap out of him. Because the Caracal's damped out so much, it forces him to come in way closer than he'd like to apply DPS, and this is going to allow our cruisers to try and catch and take him out here. So, really nice play. So we continue dancing around for a while, and uh, not much happens, we're sort of just jockeying for better position on the field. Eventually a V-pool does come in, and we get some nice damps on him. If you notice, when the damps hit, the V-pool turns in sharply. It's possible because that's because of the damps and his lock range got uh, taken out, so he had to dive in close. But it's probably just a piloting error and he gets taken out pretty quick. Maybe his Armageddon's warp up to the people again, who was coming in for tackle. But with the micro warp driver on and pre alignment, you can just warp straight, straight out again. No big deal. So you want to keep staying aligned to things, just keep away from enemies, pop in, pop out. I think you guys get the idea of how to fly this ship. Uh, not too complicated. You don't have to worry about tracking or any of that stuff. Just damp the things. Easy peasy. That's going to be it. So next time we'll be fast tackle. We'll be looking at interceptors. Thanks for watching.